A number of years ago, J. Gresham Machen at Westminster Theological Seminary wrote a very well-known book, which has become famous over the years, called Christianity and Liberalism. Uh, and that really is a book that needs to be read more and more today because what Machen argued in, in his book is that in his time period there was a version of Christianity, a type of Christianity that was presenting itself as a real option for what to believe, but when you really look down at the core beliefs within it, it wasn't really Christianity at all. In fact, it was just a different version of the faith altogether. Um, in fact, Machen wrote this whole book to try to warn people against that, that version of the faith. Well, in the modern day, there's something very similar still happening, and we may not call it liberal Christianity today, although there's a sense in which that's true, but really the term now is progressive Christianity. It's a, it's a version of Christianity that sort of sells itself as a valid option for Christians that, that on the surface looks a lot like the Christian worldview and may seem in the eyes of many people to be more acceptable, more, more likable, a really more palatable version of the faith. But again, like in Machen's day, when you really bore down into it, you realize there's some really serious problems there. So one of the common questions is, how do I spot that progressive Christianity when it looks so much like true Christianity? Well, just a few uh, tidbits for you. Uh, one of the sort of hallmarks of progressive Christianity is the way they view Jesus. Sort of the orthodox view of, of Jesus, of course, that he's the divine son of God and worthy of our worship uh, and worthy of our adoration and to be praised uh, as God. Um, but of course, that's not what progressive Christians believe. They believe that Jesus isn't so much the divine son of God, um, but rather just a moral example for us to follow. Jesus is more of a, of a big brother that sets a pattern that we walk in his footsteps. And that's partly true, of course. We do follow Jesus' example. But progressive Christians make that the main thing. Jesus is just a, a picture of what we can be and what we can do. And that his main point is just to set an example for us. So the lowering of Jesus is sort of the first mark of progressive Christianity. And tightly tied to that, as I've already suggested, is a second mark, which is this big focus on moralism. Um, if you don't have any sort of sense of uh, Jesus as someone to be worshipped, then he's just someone to be emulated. So the highest goal of the Christian life for progressive Christianity is that you're just to be a good person. Uh, you should just follow certain rules. Uh, you should be kind to your neighbor. And so you're not really left with a gospel of salvation. You're left with a moral code, and it really reduces to sort of this moralistic religion. And then the third mark is tightly close to that too, which is if you think you can be a good person, you must have a very low view of sin, which is another thing that progressive Christianity has, which is this idea that, well, people aren't really that fallen. They're not, they're not really that bad. There's not really anything marring us that we're all good people at, at the core and therefore really do have an opportunity um, to be uh, even better. Um, and so you'll find that in progressive uh, Christian circles, there's a downplaying of, of the word sin. There's certainly no interest in talking about the wrath of God on sin. God is not portrayed as at all disturbed by or upset with sin. Um, and these are sort of the classic hallmarks of progressive Christianity. Now, when you wrap all that up, you're left with something that's not really Christianity at all at the end. If you don't have a divine Jesus, and if you reduce it all to moralism, there's no real fall or sin, then the cross isn't really anything that saves you. Uh, when you look at the cross, it's just a good example of a good person. It's not really good news. That's what's really sad about progressive Christianity. At the end of the day, it's, it's really not good news at all. It's really that it's all up to you. Uh, and if it's all up to us, that's, that's bad news. But of course, the real gospel is good news, that it's all done and completed in the great and finished work of Christ.